And ICICI Securities as well, despite a strong set of numbers, is currently at about 425. Let's connect then with the management to talk a little bit about the business traction, uh, the entry into zero brokerage segment as well, as well as the retail broking momentum and whether or not that's continuing. Vijay Chandok is the Managing Director and CEO at ICICI Securities and now joins us on the show. Thank you so much for taking time out. Now, Mr. Chandok, it certainly has been a good quarter for you looking at the Q3 numbers, but your market share on a sequential basis has been trimmed. Is this because of changes in the margin funding norms or would you attribute it to something else? Sure. Thank you so much for uh, having me on this show. Uh, I'm sure by now, as you would have seen uh, our results, uh, we've had uh, a good growth uh, on uh, across different businesses. The revenues, uh, profits, revenues up 47%, profits up 95%. Yes, we've actually, on a YY basis, gained market share. Uh, market share in equity actually went up by about 160 basis points. What you're really referring to is uh, the change in market share that has happened on a sequential basis. Uh, the trimming of market share that has happened on sequential ba uh, basis is uh, actually a consequence of changes in the recent uh, regulations uh, that have come in place. Uh, what is interesting is that these regulations uh, have impacted a specific kind of uh, uh, market opportunity uh, which tended to be very low yield. So uh, while uh, in a headline sense it impacts uh, market share, uh, it has a minimal impact on revenue and that is what is reflected in uh, uh, growth in revenue. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, you know, it would be interesting to also note that despite the reduction in market share on a sequential month on month basis, uh, even in the equities business where this trimming has happened, uh, we've continued to see an improvement actually in revenue run rates. So, so that's the sort of uh, uh, narrative that we are seeing uh, on market share and the impact that it's having on our business. Right. Now, going forward, the retail participation has shut up very considerably and that's really led to a very strong performance for the company as well in your financials. But the question is, is this sort of just a rush that we're seeing towards the equity markets and as we see things, you know, really resume normalcy, people getting back to work, that this sort of a rush will fizzle out? Do you believe it's sustainable or not? Indeed, uh, retail participation has been on an upswing uh, right from the beginning of this fiscal year ever since you know the pandemic uh, uh, sort of uh, took, took place. Uh, it has uh, been a global trend, it's been an Indian trend and it's uh, certainly helped uh, our business. Uh, interestingly, this trend continues even as uh, you, know, uh, you know we've entered into uh, the early part of uh, quarter four. Uh, and um, uh, as a result of this, uh, uh, we have seen increasing participation of both newcomers as well as existing uh, investors in, in much larger measure, which is reflected in increasing the total number of, I would say, active customers in the market, uh, increasing number of active customers for us. Uh, this number has gone up by more than 34% on a buy -over basis for us. Sure. All right. Now, 33% of customers are actually coming from outside the bank, which is great. So, you know, give us a sense of where they're being sourced from and how much of this is digital. Yeah. So, um, at the beginning of this fiscal year, uh, we made an important uh, pivot, uh, which is pivoting to uh, acquiring customers digitally uh, and uh, pivoting to acquiring customers through an open architecture. Uh, it is beginning to start uh, uh, taking its root within the company and uh, the numbers that you just quoted is a reflection of uh, the traction that's coming on account of uh, this uh, approach. Uh, most of our uh, digitally acquired customers uh, tend to be agnostic to the banking partner. So uh, they invariably come from uh, whichever bank uh, they may be already pre-existing, having a pre-existing account. Uh, and therefore, uh, we have uh, started seeing uh, on a run rate basis, uh, this number uh, increasing in terms of their own uh, our total acquisition that we are doing on a month on month basis. So to date has reached uh, for the last quarter, it has actually reached about 30% of our total sourcing, 
which is coming from uh, customers who uh, don't have an account with ICC Bank. Uh, we expect going forward the uh, you know the mix to continue to uh, increase in favor of uh, becoming a lot more blended beyond ICC Bank. Okay. Now, how do you plan to compete with zero-cost brokerages as well? You know, those, for example, like Angel, who are aggressively eating market share right now. Uh, we know that you have um, ICICI Direct Neo, but how scalable is that from not this from this point on? So we are moving ahead in the market with a fairly agile mindset. I think uh, uh, there are different types of customers across the market. Uh, and uh, we have come up with a series of plans to address uh, these varying needs. We've come up with a prime plan, which uh, sort of is very attractive and unique for uh, a person who's a customer who's invested, interested in cash, uh, because it offers instant liquidity and no other uh, uh, house uh, on the street offers that facility. Uh, that's uh, really found some very, very good traction and more than 54% uh, of our total uh, new customers are all uh, active customers are all uh, opting for this kind of a service. It's unique and that uh, really has helped us uh, compete uh, uh, very well in the market. And it is one of the reasons why we've been able to gain market share. Uh, when it comes to trading uh, segment, uh, uh, we uh, came out with a plan called Options 20 about a year ago. Uh, it was in a sense a kind of a, a, a trial for us to enter into a discount broking uh, format. Uh, it did extremely well. It helped us gain market share and customers there. Uh, encouraged by that, we came out with Neo in the month of December. Uh, NEO is the most competitive plan in the market. It is even more competitive than the discount, the traditional discount broking plans that exist. Uh, it offers uh, uh, zero broking on uh, futures, uh, 20 rupees on uh, intraday trades uh, and uh, options. Uh, we are seeing a very, very healthy adoption in uh, less than uh, just about a month, I would say, of its launch. So we remain quite optimistic uh, uh, of uh, how this plan is going to help us attract another segment of the market, which is the trading segment. So straddled with a series of plans, uh, I think uh, we are all set to take on uh, uh, the opportunity in the market. Right. Uh, how exactly is the distribution business panning out, both on mutual funds as well as non-MF side? And are you, uh, what kind of market share are you looking at taking? Yeah, so the distribution business uh, has started uh, showing the sequential pickup uh, that is reflected in our numbers. Uh, on the mutual fund side, uh, we have uh, started seeing an increase in uh, market share. Uh, the um, uh, way in which we're competing in the market uh, with regards to mutual fund is uh, we've come up with a very interesting uh, new app targeted at uh, newcomers to the market. It's called ICC Direct Money. Uh, it's uh, seeing a healthy adoption, C uh, customers are liking it, we are adding new features to it, we are adding an install liquidity fe feature to it, install loan feature to it. Um, we are pretty optimistic that that will help us keep the traction that we've already started seeing uh, uh, growing. In fact, market share on run rate basis uh, for us has actually increased by almost 15-20 uh, basis points uh, uh, on, on a YY basis. Uh, revenue market share for us has gone up there. Uh, similarly, when we talk of outside of mutual fund business, uh, uh, the traction continues to grow, particularly in the health and life. Uh, and in both these areas, uh, we are investing uh, in, in uh, you know, building up uh, traction over there. 20% uh, growth we have seen in, uh, in, in outside of mutual fund and the life and uh, the insurance business on a sequential basis growth. So uh, going forward, we remain invested and pretty optimistic about uh, growth trends continuing. Right. Cost cutting has been aiding your profitability as well. Now that we are more or less back to, um, you know, normal say, will costs as well begin to pile up or are you going to stick with the lean structure? Yeah, so uh, we have committed, uh, uh, we are committed to a, a strategy of demonstrating operating leverage. What it means is that uh, we, uh, our business model is morphing to ensure that uh, whatever costs are incurred, we show an amplification in revenue. Uh, that's the philosophy and approach that we are sort of driving within the company. Uh, uh, we were 55% uh, um, cost to income uh, about a year ago. We are down to 42%. Uh, 
uh, we have guided a number. We have actually gone ahead of that number. Uh, we like the strategy. It is evening dividends. It, it's also uh, something that uh, comes naturally, to, given the fact that we have a highly digital oriented business. So the ability to uh, continue to uh, move in that path uh, is is very much uh, there, and uh, therefore going forward as well, we will remain committed uh, in spite of normalisation uh, to ensure that operating leverage is continuously getting demonstrated in a much more and more efficient manner. Mr. Chandra, pleasure having you on board. Many thanks for joining in and uh, giving us a view as to how you've seen, you know, customer acquisitions, how the equities business has been and your digital power, uh, digital sourcing as well has been powering your demand. That's the view coming in on ICICI Securities. But the rest of the market is...